Good evening, TV Free Baltimore viewers. We have a very special edition of Windows on the World. We have somebody that flew into Baltimore this evening. He's only going to be here for a short time, but he's been bouncing around the world for the past few years, and we certainly want to hear about all his adventures. The individual I'm talking about at one time was an urban homesteader in Baltimore City. He became a community advocate for the community of Reservoir Hill, and our special guest tonight is none other than Adam Meister. How you doing, Adam? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Well, hey, I'm, I'm delighted to see that you're back in Baltimore, a place that I wish you spent more time in. But we really want to get your perspective um, on a lot of things. But first, we're going to start about your perspective on Baltimore City. Since you have been jet-setting around the world for the past few years and living in different places, you've got a whole different perspective than somebody that was just living in Baltimore City like you were for a number of years and being a urban homesteader and the f last place that I can remember that we did anything at was together was in April of 2012 at the screening of fleeing Baltimore but um so that was the last time that Adam and I actually did something together and since um, April of 2012 to now the city has lost 30,000 more people and nobody wanted to talk about that so Adam from going around the world, living in different places. What's your perspective now on Baltimore City? Well, it's crime infested. Uh, one can clearly see that when you're in other cities and you can walk around in the middle of the night and be totally safe, nothing, nothing bad happens to you. A lot of people here are very dependent. Uh, there's a vict victim mentality. People aren't go-getters. They're kind of stuck in their way. Uh, they put their leaders on pedestals and, and expect their leaders to solve their problems. And uh, it's just bl blame everyone else. Blame everybody. There's no personal responsibility, very, very little personal responsibility here. And, uh, you know, living in a fantasy world where they can ignore numbers like that. I mean, the, the, the people have spoken. The population has continued to go down since the 1950s. Uh, and it's for financial reasons, tax reasons, safety reasons. Uh, the, the facts are clear, uh, but people, they don't want to address it. And it, it comes down to it, people being individuals and saying, you know, it, it, I, I got to make a difference myself too. I mean, they, they, you can't just rely on the government to fix everything. Okay. And it seems like a lot of people do. And of course the government is terrible at, at, at fixing every, everything. So some people who do take personal responsibility, they leave, but co compared to other cities, uh, yeah, it's, it's crime infested. It's dirty. Uh, and, and this is, I'm, I'm, all over the world. I mean, people say Johannesburg and Cape Town are, are dangerous places. Uh, I, I was there, and they're cleaner than Baltimore in, in a lot of uh, places. And I wasn't scared at all. Uh, but but some pe many people who visit those areas are scared, but they don't have the Baltimore training. It, it's weird. Like nothing nothing razzles me at all when I go to cities that are supposed like supposed bad areas of cities. It's nothing compared to Baltimore. Nothing nothing at all. So uh, I mean. There are good people in Baltimore. I, my family, friends all, all live in, in, in the region and everything, but the city itself is clearly falling apart and uh, dangerous and to, way too expensive to live in. Okay, for those of us that know you on a personal level, catch us up with when you left and why you left and where you went the first time you left. In, in 2013, I think it was August the 2nd of 2013, I, I was uh, walking to a... Uh, I'm walking to a club. I was walking to uh, the dance night at the Lithuanian Hall. And uh, earlier that evening, I had attended a peace rally with Nick and Marilyn Mosby in uh, right, right uh, west of Bolton Hill there. And uh, when I was at 9 o'clock at night, when I was walking to the club, uh, two youth approached me. And uh, one pulled out a big gun. It was a fight or flight moment. Right. And I just ran in the middle of Utah Place screaming, and they ran away. And uh, then the cops came, and I was so happy. I was like, wow, yes, I, I defeated them. They took nothing. And the cops, they, they didn't understand what had happened. They're like, oh, what did you lose? What's the problem? Blah, 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 blah. And they took me downtown. They interviewed me, et cetera, et cetera. And I was just so happy to be alive. And uh, I went to the, I was, you know, I'm a very energetic person. So I went to the dance night. I had a great time. I was telling everybody that there was an attempted mugging and I defeated them. And, uh, and later the, the, the police, uh, 
they, they, they called me a few days later and they wanted to, I don't know, they wanted to tell me something about it and then they, but, uh, they left the message so I had to call them back. And then when I called them back, they didn't even know what I was talking about. They're like, yeah, we get so many of these, uh, you know, we, we can't keep track of them. And that was the last I ever heard of it. But the lesson that I learned that night was I am not dying on the streets of Baltimore. At that point, I decided to sell my house in Reservoir Hill and uh, see, see what happens. Tra travel around. Just start anew. I wanted to start anew. And again, I've never had bad dreams. Like so many people, you know, when people have, get mugged like that, when they uh, was attempted mugging, when you get a gun pulled on you like that, you can have bad memories. For me, it was all good. It changed my life. And oh, wow. It was, it was awesome. It was awesome. And it started a new life. And uh, really just got me in motion because I was in a rut. I was in Reservoir Hill, you know, trying to fix Reservoir Hill, trying to clean Reservoir Hill. People couldn't clean their own, people couldn't wipe their own tucklesses, so I had to wipe their own tucklesses for them, basically. Basically, when you, people, <laughs> they litter, everything's thrown everywhere, you, you pick up for other people. And, and I had enough of that. I'm, and uh, so it was, I was looking out for Adam there. I was, I was not going to die. You cannot sacrifice. People expect you to sacrifice your life for Baltimore. Oh, it doesn't happen very often. Innocent people don't get killed. Yeah, they do get killed sometimes. You do, they do get mugged. Mug, mugging's pretty darn bad. And it's, just, it's unacceptable. This doesn't happen in other cities, dudes, this is in, in the world. Does this happen in Singapore? When I visit Singapore, do youth approach me with guns? <laughs> no, of course not. What would happen in Singapore if a youth approached me with a gun? You, you should see what would ha happen to that youth. Now, I'm not saying that's a proper solution, but um, it, are, are, are cities as filthy as Baltimore? No, they're not. Is Oslo as filthy as Baltimore? No, it's not. Why is this? <laughs> I mean, is Tokyo as filthy as Baltimore? No. So you can go see these places. You don't have to be a tree in Baltimore. You don't have to be a tree here. You can still love Baltimore. You can still love the Orioles or the Ravens or your family. You can support charities or whatever. Do you have to give up your freaking life for Baltimore? I mean, that's what they want. That's what some of these people expect you to do. That's what's glorified. Oh, look, he, he, he got mugged and now he's still, he's still picking up uh, the trash that everybody's throwing on the ground. Heck no, no. You got to look out for yourself, dudes. And man, it has been an adventure. It has been an adventure. And you know, aim for success. Don't aim to be a freaking victim. Everybody in Baltimore City wants to be a freaking victim. Oh, I'm poor. It's Bill Gates' fault. It's this person's. Why is that person so rich? Who cares about income inequality? Improve yourself. Who can What's it matter to me if Bill Gates is a billionaire? What's it matter to me if the people in Homeland are so rich? What's it matter? I should be. You should strive to be them. You should strive for success. Why strive to be a failure and to be a victim? And say, oh, this bad thing happened to me. Oh, this I got an empty building next to me, and I can't I can't improve my life, and there's rats here and this, that. I can't, I can't. Then leave, okay? If, if it's if it sucks so much, then leave. Stop being a victim. But in today's society, victimhood is glorified. In today's society, personal responsibility is the new counterculture. And I'm I'm proud to be part of that new counterculture, baby. I couldn't agree with you more. Um because at TV Free Baltimore, we talk a lot about freedom, First Amendment rights, Second Amendment rights, but we, what we also talk about here is that the flip side of freedom is responsibility, personal responsibility, and not government dependence or expecting somebody else to make a change. And I know your character, and both you and I were on the streets for years in Baltimore City, uh, trying to be self-reliant within the communities that we were in, trying to clean up the streets ourselves, um, working with the government, and I completely agree with you that there's too much of the victim mentality in Baltimore City and there's too much of the lack of understanding that the flip side of freedom is responsibility. So when you left, you left Baltimore and Maryland. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. And where did you go to? I was in L.A. for a while. I stopped by. I, I mean, I started traveling around the world, basically. But I was in L.A. for a while. I, was in, uh, uh, I visited uh, Brooklyn for a while. Uh, but, uh, I, I mean, I can name all the places I, I was at around the world or around the United States, if you want me to. I've been to so many places, Australia, Israel, yeah, Norway, Sweden, Japan, Singapore. Uh, I've been to uh, up, up and down the West Coast, Seattle, Portland, Boise, uh, Canada. I love uh, Vancouver and Calgary and Edmonton and uh, Quebec City, South Africa. Uh, where, where else? All, all over. I can't even think of all the darn so places. Oh, yeah. But, uh, uh, Uruguay, Montevideo, Uruguay, Buenos Aires, Santiago, uh, uh, Rio de Janeiro. I mean, I just go from place to place. Wow. So you've been jet-setting around the world. But 
Um, when I watch the videos that I found recently, you're definitely living a minimalist lifestyle. L let's talk about that a little bit. Um, describe this type of lifestyle that well, you're living right this now. This is part of the problem. Everybody thinks they need possessions. These possessions are an attack vector, and they anchor you down. Why, why do all these people in Baltimore City need a big screen TV? And then they, they say they're poor. I don't have a big screen TV. I don't have a car. I don't have a house anymore. I got rid of all that. I don't have a cell phone. I have a laptop. And I have a 20-year-old suitcase that I keep my stuff in. And so people are like, how do you afford to go from Airbnb to another? Well, because I don't have cell phone bills. I don't have internet bills. I don't have car payments. I don't have house payments. I mean, cutting your expenses. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's pretty easy to do uh, if, if you have discipline. People are addicted to TV. People are mm -hmm. addicted to cell phones, addicted to having a bigger house and getting into debt. No debt at all. No debt at all. So the minimalist lifestyle sets you free from the burden of materialism yeah. so you can um, gain the wealth of life experiences from going around the world. That's a nice, that's a nice way of putting it, definitely. Tell our audience all about your involvement with Bitcoin, how it started, what it means, and where you're at with it. So November of 2013, I bought two Bitcoin. And at the time, they were six. It had just sur it had gotten into the mainstream news again. It had surged to six hundred dollars. It surged to six hundred dollars. So I paid like twelve hundred dollars for two Bitcoin. I started talking about it immediately, even before I left Baltimore. And that was once I was out of Baltimore. I, I really had a lot of time to research more and more about it and go to Bitcoin events. And I really just I started making videos about it. I became the Bitcoin Meister. Hello everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Welcome to the One Bitcoin Show. Today is June the 14th, 2020. Strong hand. Conviction, long-term thinking. Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. One Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. Offended by selling. Yeah. Conviction. I never gave up. I never give up. Well, I want to thank you for coming on and for any of our viewers that are looking for people that don't go down the worn paths in life find Adam Meister on the internet, wherever he is. I've always felt that he engages me in a way that's refreshing, new ideas, new way of doing things and approaching things. So Adam, thank you for being here and we're gonna end it there.